to discuss the reaction to the Chauvin verdict and other topics as Shelby County Commissioner Tammy Sawyer. Uh, Commissioner Sawyer, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, Commissioner, I know that you're also the new managing director of Our Black Party. And before people start saying at home, what is that? Let me break it down because the website says that you stand on a principle of black people having a right to own their politics, a right to a fair and just criminal legal system, right to economic health and educational equity, a right to every unalienable right guaranteed under the Constitution, and a responsibility to love each other. With that being said, let's go ahead and get right to it. First, a majority of black people say that, you know, they feel relieved with the guilty verdict in the Chauvin case yesterday, right? But that guilty verdict was really just the beginning in getting justice. I want you to help our viewers understand why. So we had relief. Some people had joy. There was peace. Um, but we're just at the beginning. Uh, this is one of 100 cases that have happened since George Floyd was killed. And I know we're going to talk about some of the names later, but even right here in Tennessee, as you all just showed, um, our Black Party, who I work with now, um, actually was responsible for connecting Attorney Ben Crump with the family. And, and that's one of the roles we play is making sure that we can get resources to Black people, not just in the instance of a police shooting, but so that we have opportunity and access to jobs, to health care, decriminalizing poverty, um, increasing access to schools, and uh, pushing policy issues such as having state equity officers. And what we want to do is prepare candidates who can sit in electoral seats to make this change. You know, let's talk about this, because the, while the nation was actually learning of the guilty verdict, you know, another black person died at the hands of police. We mentioned that, a 16-year-old in Ohio. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about the white officer that may have been justified because the teen had a knife. But most activists say that because of so many of these cases, whether it's George Floyd, Dante Wright, uh, even here in Memphis, Jerry Stewart, Brandon Weber, uh, they're sick of black people dying at the hands of cops. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. But I'll just go ahead and say people always throw at us, well, black people are dying every day. We know that crime is high here in Memphis. But what we also have to realize is Michelle Alexander pointed out in the new Jim Crow that the action of calling the police really does not stem crime. Being tough on crime, if that worked, we wouldn't have crime in Memphis because we are considered one of the top 20 tough on crime cities. And so what we do know is that what we need to be doing is putting money into communities. We have defunded black communities in this country and especially in the South. Binghampton, North Memphis, South Memphis, Frazier and Raleigh, I could go on and on. Our children are going to schools that are falling apart where the doors are hanging off of, um, you know, hanging off of the wall, um, where their water isn't clean. People are having to sell their houses because they can't afford the mortgage. People are being evicted because the rent is just too high. So if we I, I need to cut you off, but we have about 30 seconds, and I really want to get this in. You're a commissioner. You're also an activist. We can't forget, you know, you leading the charge with the Take It Down uh, 901, the Confederate statues here, and you got it done. So with your current two titles, commissioner and managing director, how do we stop these killings, and what are lawmakers, change agents, going to do about it? Lawmakers have to be willing to reimagine how we budget our money and where that money goes. We can't reimagine policing if we don't reallocate the dollars to the community. You're absolutely right. Finally, I got about 15 seconds. I'm going to try to sneak this question in, right? Um, how can you reimagine police when you even talk to some of the uh, black officers and there's this thin blue line to where black officers won't speak up when they see something is wrong? How do you change the culture? I'll just say really quickly, Katina, there's no such thing as blue lives. I can't change the color of my skin like an officer can take off his uniform at the end of the day. The police departments have to change that culture. Uh, Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo has spoken out a lot about the blue line and that it is hurting their relationships with communities. So much more I want to discuss, but we can't. We are out of time. I do hope that you will come back and share more of your perspective. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.